Hi everybody, this video is to give you a quick tutorial on how to use a commonly used test that in the school system, which is the RAN-RAS. So the RAN-RAS is super quick, which is really nice. It also can be used with non-reading students to help differentiate poor readers from good readers. So helping to catch those kids early and be able to give intervention as needed. So what I want to do is start off by giving just a, a few quick tips uh, based on experience and past mistakes that I've made. So whenever you go in to give an assessment, you always want to make sure that you have every piece of that assessment. So for this particular test, you're going to need your manual and that will be important obviously before so that you know how to administer the test and then after so that you know how to score the test properly. For this particular test, you have these little booklets. You have an objects, you have colors, numbers, letters, a two set, and a three set. And then most importantly of all, you need to make sure that you have the correct protocol. So the RAN-RAS only has one, which is super great, but do be cognizant in other tests when you might have a protocol for different ages, so different protocols for different ages. So take it from me, from past experiences and mistakes, don't make that mistake. Just give yourself a checklist, make sure you have everything. Okay, so let's get started. Let's go over how to administer and score the RAN-RAS. All right, so let's get started. So what you'll find is in your examiner's manual on page eight, you will see these are the directions that you're going to be reading to the child. And what's really great about this is that all, everything that you're reading to the child is in red, so it really sticks out. And I'm only going to go over this one booklet, the naming of objects, because basically the directions are the same for every subsection. So you get the idea just by one. But you'll see on the outside of the booklet, these are the trials. And then on the inside is where you'll actually be doing the testing. And that is the same for all of the booklets. So for example, here are the colors, the trials, and then the actual things that you're testing. And then I'll also just show you the three set so that you have an idea, the three set trials, and then the three set actual testing protocol. And one thing as just a word of warning, because something that I have had experience with in the past is I always like to be very explicit with the child who I'm testing. After we've gone through the directions, I do like to open the booklet and just remind them that when they get to the end of the row to keep going, not to stop here, but keep going after they've started naming. I've had a lot of kids in the past just name the first row and then stop. So that will mess with the kid's time and ultimately the results. So you do just wanna make sure that that is very clear to the child, that they're not only naming one row, that they're naming the whole thing. And also when they're naming, that they're naming in reading order. So from left to right, and that they're not naming down the columns. I've also had students do that. So just make sure that those rules are very explicit to the child. Okay, so here's what we do. You read this red part to the child, which says, we're going to play some naming games. I will show you a card like this one, and you'll point to this card, and you will try to name what you see on the card as quickly as you can without making mistakes. You will start here, so show them where to start, and go across the rows until you get to the end of the card, right? So make sure that's very explicit from left to right. They're going this way. First, let's do a little practice. Tell me the name of each picture. So then what you do is you just point to some objects at random and have them name them. And essentially what this does is it just makes sure that the child is familiar with all the objects, specifically with little bitties who you're working with. You wanna make sure that they do know all their colors because that's something that if they don't know them, obviously you're not gonna be able to administer this test. So once they've done that, you'll go back to your reading here. Very good. Now let's do a little practice run. Name these objects and you want them to name these as quickly as you can without making any mistakes. All right, so you're gonna have them name, awesome. Great, now you're ready to try your first card. Remember, start here, so again, reminding them, start here and name all the pictures on each whole row as quickly, here it says, as quickly as you can, when I say go, 
all right? So once you've given them those directions, get your timer ready. I always use my phone. So I just use my timer on my phone. You say, ready, set, go. As soon as you say go, you start the timer, whether the child starts naming right away or not. So then the child goes across and they name all of the objects. So here might be the trickiest part of administering this test is when you have a kid who names things very quickly. So the rule here for administering this test is that you are going to mark every time the child makes a mistake. So here are all of the words that correlate with the pictures, and that's gonna be the same for every single one. So the colors, and then also here you will see the numbers, the two set, and then the three set is on the back as well. So what you do while the child is naming is you just follow along and make sure that they're naming the object correctly. If the child makes a mistake, what you do is you circle the incorrect item and you write above what the child said. So this is something that sometimes just takes some practice. So it's not necessarily a bad idea to do an audio recording as well. If you have that permission, make sure you have that permission before audio recording your clients. But then what you'll do is circle the ones they've gotten correct, write what they said instead. And if a child does self-correction, so let's say they get to hear and they say chair, no dog, then what you would do is circle and you write SC above for self-correct. When the child is complete, you're going to write the time. So as soon as they say the last item, you stop your timer. You write the time that it took the child to go through the entire booklet, the number of errors that the child made, and then the number of self-corrections that the child did as well. Okay, let's talk about scoring now. For this particular test, the raw score will be the total number of time in seconds that it takes for the child to go through the test. So you will put the raw score for every single subtest. So that will be not only here on each of the subtest sections in the back as well, but also you'll transfer that over to the front and you'll put the raw score here as well. So remember to do that in seconds. Once you have those raw scores, you're gonna go back to your examiner's manual and on page 51, you'll see how to convert those raw scores into percentile ranks and standard scores. So remember, raw scores basically mean nothing. We have to have standard scores. So be cognizant of which category you're talking about when you are trying to convert your scores. So objects, colors, numbers, letters, two set, three set. Keep in mind that's how the test is administered. That's also how it's scored. So what you will do is you will find the child's time in seconds in the corresponding row. So whatever the seconds were. On the left-hand side, you'll see the percentile rank that correlates with that. And then on the far right, you'll see the, you will see the standard score that correlates with that. One little trick that I learned in grad school that I found to be super helpful is actually just using a paper or something to keep you all lined up. So let's say that this kid did it in 68 seconds. That would give them a standard score of 107 with a percentile rank of 67. Another major word of warning that I do want to point out is that this is broken down like many tests with age groups. So do make sure that you are on the proper age group when you are doing the conversion. So this particular chart is five to five two, but if you flip over a couple of pages, you will see that now we're looking at students who are six to six two. So always double check this. This is really vital to make sure that you have the correct conversion from raw scores to standard scores and percentile ranks. And that's true for a lot of tests. So just always be cognizant. Make sure you read the top of all of the manuals. Then when you want to convert the raw scores to age and grade equivalents, because that's part of the protocol as well, you'll go to page 99. That's where the start of it is. And you will see that you will have those raw scores again in the same columns and age equivalents on either side. So for this particular one, it's the age equivalent on both sides, unlike the last chart where you had two different things depending on the side that you were looking at. 
The next page over on 102 is where you will find those grade equivalents. So be aware here that this is not broken down by age, like converting raw scores to percentiles and standard scores. This is the same no matter what the age of the child is. So those are super helpful to be able to finish filling out the front of your protocol. So that would give you raw score, age equivalent, grade equivalent, percentile rank, your standard score, now let's look at descriptive. Most standardized tests that you're going to be administering will have somewhere in the manual this descriptive rating. And this is something that I often have students tell me that they have difficulty finding. So I just wanted to point out for the RANRAS in particular, it's on page 16. And what this is really helpful for is when you're writing their report to be able to really use those descriptive words. So based on the standard score, the child will fall somewhere between very superior to very poor. And this is really helpful because it'll give you some indication on how to describe the child's performance on this particular test. So make sure that you're adding that to your protocol and to your when you're writing the report as well. So that goes right here on the protocol. Just a last few quick tips and we're gonna wrap this up. Always make sure that the top of your protocol is filled out appropriately so that you have all the information. When you're doing the child's age, I always recommend using a device, even if you're really good at calculating the age, if you're certain that you're right, just use the app that's available, the age calculator, just to double check your work. I have found that um, oftentimes I've seen people make mistakes because they think they've done it right and they have it, and that could really change the outcomes of, of the test. So do make sure that you do that. Additionally, just one last thought, always double check your test for the age range that's appropriate for the child. I've made that mistake, I think once or twice before where I administered a test to a child and the child was too old for the test or grabbed a protocol and it was the wrong age and the child was too young for the test. So little things like that, that you know this is a good test for checking for good reading skills, pre-reading skills. So just be cognizant of knowing the age range of all of your tests, not just the RANRAS. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or need any additional information, feel free to comment below.